Hey, how's it going? So I am Brian Bowden, AKA he enables in uh, every area in the metaverse that you find me in big screen that we're going to talk about here in uh, VR chat and wherever else I go in the metaverse. I'm here with uh, Mr. Ramsey. I'll let him introduce himself in a minute. I just want to break into kind of why we're here and what we're going to talk about a little bit. So um, we're going to talk about a prayer room that we have in big screen. And but I just want to break into how I got there. I've been in the metaverse now with Oasis Church VR for two and a half years, maybe going on a little longer than that. Um, seen a lot of stuff happen, just a lot of God moving. And at the end of the day, um, I stayed away from big screen and had a bunch of people tell me to go there and, and I just didn't want to do it. But then there's God. So I ended up over there one day and um, I was just going around from room to room, kind of looking to see what was going on. And I was in a room where it was a Christian discussion room and and uh, uh, this this dude came in, he was, he was drunk. I mean, you couldn't even understand what he was saying. People had some interesting reactions to him. And, uh, and I remember just saying to him, do you want to be free? Right? And he said, yes. And I remember that it was immediately, can I pray for you? And as I started praying for him, that's when the Holy Spirit started opening up opening up things and it, it, he, there were people he had to forgive. I mean, it was, it was not a question. And so as he started some forgiveness, then there was some deliverance and, and boom. I mean, all of a sudden he went from unintelligible to absolute normal speech. And he was, I'm sober. I even to, I wasted money on that fifth I drank, you know what I mean? Yes. I, I was going to say that. Yep. Um, <laughs> like that was a waste of thirty dollars. Yeah, but really, and I, and I don't want to go too much into the family life and all that different stuff of various people or whatever. But he had, you know, a bunch of daughters and was on his own as a as a father and and had gone through a lot and and that forgiveness and it just opened him up. He he had been a Christian and and was a Christian and just in a horrible space and and so anyway that. Um, just one example of, you know, the first day that I went into big screen. And, and so I opened a room for a time. Um, Jesus is the only way. And it was a conversational room and it was good. Um, but I kept thinking back to, you know, what I've done in my own life and, you know, what really happened with him. And I started this room need prayer in Jesus name. And in need prayer in Jesus name, what we do is we're silent for the most part. I mean, we'll talk a little bit, but we're, we're, um, and we'll, we'll get your opinion on this, right? We're, we're be still and know that I am God, right? So just being one with him, just listening to him, just, just meditating on him, um, thinking about him, loving him letting him love us. And we pray, you know, before we go in there and, and while we're in there that he would bring in the people that he wants to touch and change their lives. And, and I got stories about that, right. You know, people that never have been in the app that stumble in there and, and whatnot, but I guess Ramsey, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and we'll chit chat about it. Okay. I'm um, Ryan Ramsey. Um, I've been in VR for about two years now, I think. And, um, you know, I come from, a uh, background of large church and then during the pandemic that fell apart and now I'm part of a home church, um, that I, that I lead with another guy. And, uh, I think a friend of ours at the church actually bought an Oculus. She bought a, a Oculus and she was letting us all try it out and show us. So the next day I went out and got one and I jumped on and um, loved it. You know, I've always been a game technology guy, right? You can see I'm, I'm a computer guy by trade and uh, really enjoyed it. And I, I jumped into this app called Big Screen that was basically a, a place to, it's a social app where you can watch videos together. Um, 
and pretty quick there was there was a couple of Christian rooms that I jumped in and I met some other believers and it turned into it was almost it was a ministry opportunity and I, I connected with a gentleman who's a pastor in North Carolina and a, a talker okay and he loved the conversations and and he loves people in a way where he's reaching out to him he, he's a street preacher uh, by heart and he was using this oculus to to preach so he and I ended up starting a little ministry and we called it VR Lighthouse for Jesus and we were doing I was basically hosting the rooms and keeping everything under control and mediated and he would preach and uh, we started to get persecuted in there by some atheists by you know just antagonists which happens whenever you're in an internet situation right you're going to have internet bullies and uh so we took off from there and we we went over to this app called alt space that we'd heard about and that's where i met tiger or max and he enables or brian and they were awesome they they basically helped get us started in alt space by building us a church space and they introduced us to another brother named doug who absolutely like loves building virtual church spaces and he built us several so we moved everything there and we got away from big screen well alt space and the powers that be decided they were shutting it down so it kind of put a hindrance on this ministry this that we had going and uh we ended up going back to big screen for some time and i was the one telling he enables hey you should come over there god's doing amazing things i mean we had seen literally like anywhere from 20 to 40 people give their lives to Jesus there. And it's an amazing thing when you're in virtual reality that people are willing to open up about their issues more than they would face to face with anybody that they know in real life. So now you have this opportunity to get deep with people and and it's just it's a it's an amazing thing that you don't have even in a in a, a lot of church situations, right? When people are worried about gossip and such and such. Like now you have this fake name, fake avatar. I don't know what you look like. I don't know your real name. You're gonna open up to me about stuff. It's a counseling, pastoral counseling situation as well. Well, Brian and I uh, I started attending Oasis Church. Um, which they do some amazing world builds around the book, books of the Bible. And that was impressive and started hanging out with both of them a lot and, um, and attending something that Brian hosts every Tuesday night, which is basically a Bible study discussion, really a, a training ground for ministry. And it's called Oasis Talks. And uh, that was awesome. And I still, that's, we still do that to this day. Um, but we, he was like, you know what I want to do after he came over to big screen and he saw what God was doing there. He's like, you know what? We got to do this. And then a couple weeks in, he was like, all right, I'm going to do a prayer room. And I'll tell you what, man, God showed up. And it was amazing to me. Like, I'm just sitting there like, wow, watching God move through us, his vessels, right? When we commit ourselves to be there for him, he brings people in who, are in serious need of prayer, deliverance, healing. We have literally seen people healed. This is all virtual. Uh, and it's just amazing to me to watch God move in that place and to be used by him for those situations. Like, And like I said, the training for me has really been working with Brian in this ministry and seeing how he goes after stuff. The boldness that he has has helped me grow, um, helped me get more connected with the Holy Spirit and praying for people and saying what the Spirit's telling me and learning that, you know, because I had told him originally, like, oh, I don't know, I don't have what you have. And he's like, yeah, you do. And it just, it does, it comes out, you know, and it's it's good to be there for each other, encourage one another. And uh, some pretty good friendships are developed as well. But we do try to keep the, uh, it's like like Brian was saying, big screen is really all about discussion and there's a lot of debate rooms and all kinds of stuff. There's political stuff going on all the time and other, just other debates. And we really make it a, a 
point. That's not what this room's for. This room is for prayer and silence. And sometimes we have people who understand that. And sometimes we have people who can't stop talking for two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, thank you. Um, I got a little emotional cause I, you know, it brought me back to when I got set free. Yeah. I was desperate. Yeah. These people come in and get set free because he's a good God in the metaverse. Yeah, he's there. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, I mean, what amazes me, though, too, is think about, you know, as a human, we can't reach people outside of our vicinity. Well, we've been reaching people in every country around the world because of Oculus. We prayed with Muslims who got set free, who got saved, right? We've prayed with, I mean, for people from Iran, we've seen some amazing stories of around the world. Um people that are being affected by this movement. And it's not just us doing this. There's a lot of good brothers and sisters out there who are doing ministry in the metaverse now. And it's a, it's a really cool thing. And God is showing up there big time. And I think about the kids, think about these kids, right. Who are coming in there and God is moving on the children right now. Big time. You know, we're helping people who are having identity issues and all this gender identity stuff that's being thrown at them by the schools. Even, you know, I think of the, the young kid who was in there one time and he was like, he was like nine or 10 years old. And he was saying how his parents stopped taking him to church because the church was homophobic. And I started asking him like, are you, so you're, you're gay. He said, yeah. I said, uh, so you're practicing this stuff. And he's like, Oh no, not at all. Like my teachers told me if I didn't like girls, I must like boys, therefore I must be gay. And I said, wait a second. I said, you, I, your identity is set by God. And I had a great discussion with him. Like, you don't need to choose your sexual preference at 10 years old. Trust me, wait a few years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just, just being able to talk, have real, real talks with these people. It's like, and just seeing that he had a he had a love for Jesus. He had absolutely love for Jesus. But he's being told by the society that because he doesn't like girls at 10 years old, that he must be gay. And that yeah. just hurt. Yeah, and I think I think one of the interesting things about the prayer room for just for people to know if 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 they want to donate or if they just want to know, you know, like what it is about this part of Oasis. VR church, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that they're contributing to as a member, or as, you know, somebody that donates or anything. Um, that, that being still piece is, is crucial. And it, it, the, the prayer piece is, um, is super important. Like, uh, when it comes to, um, the Holy Spirit breaking through. So, I mean, think about, think about the people that, and I want to talk about some actual examples so, so that people will understand. We talk about deliverance. We talk about healing and uh, how well, how do you know? Well, you know, um, but at the end of the day and, and also discipleship, I want to hit on that real quick, too, because we have kingdom builder, you know, with discipleship. And also we put them out to other churches. And I think Dave's church is a is a good, you know, example. We put some of the, the youth out there, especially. Um, and they've 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 done well over there, but uh, so I'm just thinking how how this being still works, right? So somebody comes into the prayer room, and when it's the right person, there's a lot of trolls, different things, and we we discern through that. But when somebody comes into the prayer room and they say, "Yes, I need prayer," and we ask them a few questions, one one common one is, you know, who is Jesus to you? You know what I mean? Uh, non-intrusive, but at the same time, it really gives us a good understanding of do they 
do they know him? You know, and we've seen that, like, you know, somebody could be Indian. There's a lot of different religions. Somebody could say, yeah, I believe in, you know, even Muslims believe in Jesus. Right. But who is he to you? And so that kind of breaks some stuff down. And then I think it's the, I think it's the prayer. I think the, the way that the Holy spirit moves through prayer in this particular environment. And I, I do this in real life, right? I do this in real life and I plan on um, doing a lot more of this in real life, partnering with ministries and things like that, where I just go out where they're feeding the homeless and such. And, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Where, where, where I can talk to them while we're doing that and see if I can pray for them. But that, 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 part of prayer when you're praying for him and you're listening to the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden he gives you a word or, you know, gives you a picture or you just say something to the person and they're like, well, how'd you know that? Right. Um, it's the best. Just trusting that he's going to move through you. And I mean, I think that's, I think that's crucial for people to understand when we, we don't like when we pray before we open these rooms, which we do every time it's, it's Lord use us. We're vessels. There are people that need to be free. We pray that you would bring them here, that, that those ones that need you, whether it be deliverance, healing, salvation, whatever it is, that you would guide them here, that you would open their hearts, that you would be before them, that you would be before us, that you would open our eyes, open our ears, right? Speak through us. And I think that's the foundation that, you know, it just a short explanation of what it is that we're doing. And so what are in, in having that in mind, what are some examples of the deliverance or the healing that, that you, uh, that stand well, out? Even, even above and beyond that, something you're forgetting to even mention is the salvations we've seen. You want to do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Sorry, there's right. a lot of people looking at me. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. We're all here for we, you, man. We might get some more trolls in here too. It's okay. <laughs> it happens. So say this, say, Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you are the son of God. That you lived a perfect life. That you lived a perfect life. That you died on the cross. That you died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. Because oh. it was almost every night. When we were, because, hey, guys, we got really addicted to this. And we were literally doing this every night for six months until 3, 4, 5 a.m. in the morning. So it started to affect our personal lives a little bit. So we had to take a break. But it was it was one of those things like we didn't want to miss a night because God was moving so heavy. We were seeing people set free, but also we were seeing people give their hearts to Jesus. Yeah, They would Absolutely. just sit in the room and watch what was going on. And they would come up and say, hey, I want this. I want to know Jesus. And that was, we weren't even doing evangelism. We were just praying for other people and people are seeing what's going on. They're feeling the Holy Spirit in the room. They're being convicted and they're surrendering their lives to Jesus. And that to me was, that was an amazing thing to watch. It's just how many people were, were surrendering based on what they were seeing other people get prayed for about. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as like examples, um, I mean, obviously, we see so much uh, fear and anxiety on people. You know, yeah. like a lot of the audience we're dealing with is uh, anywhere from 10 to mid 20s, especially, right? And these, this generation is just under so much attack from the enemy when it comes to anxiety and social anxiety. And, and we have seen people get freed from that and, and God's peace literally overcoming them right there in the space. Even when they just come into the room, that's one of our number one goals is this is a peaceful place. This is God's spirit is here. So people will come in and be like, this is different. Like they can literally feel the Holy Spirit's presence yeah. in virtual reality. And that to me is amazing. I mean, as far as specific examples, um, I mean, there's, there was so many, I, I can't think of like one that stands out. I mean, we have seen some manifestations, so that always stands out a little bit. You know, we've heard people choking, coughing, like the stuff coming out of them. Um, yeah. And that, that always stands out a bit. 
that's an area where I, I kind of, I sit back and let Brian handle that because he's very bold with this, but he's, it's helped me grow in my faith and, uh, and calling, I guess, to, to start calling these things out of people, man, because it's true. It's real. And uh, it's one of those things of the churches I grew up in. Don't ever, you don't see this going on. You know, it's not that I'm a grew up in a Baptist church, but I grow up in non-denominational seeker friendly environments. And this is the stuff they want in the, in the sanctuary or in the, in the services, you know, they just want to get the band up there, put some fog on and lights and lasers and entertain people and then preach a message, you know, and, uh, maybe give an altar call every couple of weeks, but, um, not actually setting people free. Yeah. And, and, and I, I agree. I mean, I grew up in a, in a Baptist type church and I, I think that, you know, look, what happened with me set me on a path of understanding that God is who he said he is. Right. And the things that Jesus did, you know, um, the, the, it's not for show. And you explained it. You just, you just stated it. We've had people that we're praying for, and all of a sudden we're not seeking for deliverance. We're not seeking for healing. We're not, we're not like, that's not our ultimate goal. But what happens is by the grace of God, somebody comes in and gets healed, right? Like that's what they need. And we're praying for it. And all of a sudden they're like, there's no pain there. It's gone. And then, uh, <laughs> And one of the, the the Muslim people that that came into the room, he didn't want prayer and said he was Muslim, right? And then I said, listen, we pray. It's need prayer in Jesus' name. We pray in the name of Jesus. But I tell you what, if your mom has stage four cancer and she's dying, you know, I would ask for prayer. I don't care where it yeah, comes from. Yeah, I remember that guy. Right? Remember that it's in Jesus' name. And yeah. if she gets healed. It's all Jesus. And that was that was a bold that was a bold yes. one, right? It just yeah. it was on I me. Mean, if she gets healed, you remember that it was Jesus, right? And we prayed for him. And then remember he We he forgot came, all about it. Yeah. He came back a couple weeks later, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Came back and and he said, um Oh my goodness. He said, My my mom got healed. <laughs> yes. Right. And we were like, Who are you? Because oh, we yeah, yeah. <laughs> We see so many people a night. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And he he told us. He said you prayed for my my mother. I was the the Muslim, and I, he told us she was healed. And I said, "Whoa, well, you remember, right? <laughs> I do, yeah. His name. Oh, and remember, he he said. I said, yeah. do you want to live for Jesus? And he goes, I do. And yeah. we let him through that. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That was a while ago. Um. But going back to going back to what I was saying before that, that was an amazing that was an amazing move that yeah. God did there. Uh, Muslim, I mean, you, you know, I just I think that people see. So we look at the natural, right? And here we are in virtual reality, not looking at the natural at all, but in God's reality, in the metaverse, in big screen, in what we're doing there. He wants to break through. And so what happens, very, very biblical, right? All of a sudden, somebody comes in, has a need, they get healed or they get delivered. I don't know how many times where somebody has gotten delivered and coughed up whatever. And all of a sudden, somebody right next to him is, I want to be next. I, I want to know Jesus. Right? Like, how biblical is Demonstration that? of power. What's your favorite verse? What's that verse you like so much? Not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of power and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and power. There is none. It's not wise. I mean, there's none. There's none of none of our words. I mean, it's really, literally, just praying for people and watching what God does, and and uh, it's just amazing in that capacity. I speak right now to any assignment against his life in the name of Jesus. I cut you off. You no longer have any place with him in Jesus' holy name. Fear, anxiety, confusion out right now in Jesus name in the name of Jesus loose him and let him go in Jesus holy name any anything that is any spirit that is not of God loose right now in the name of Jesus 
I speak the love of the Father and the spirit of adoption over him right now in Jesus' holy name. That he would know that he knows that he knows that he is with you. And that he is yours and you are his. Thank you, Father. Just bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I feel like a free man now. Yeah. Um, I guess, is there anything else that you would say to anybody that really doesn't, isn't familiar with this or, or want to, you know? I, I mean, I think part? another area that a lot of people have trouble with is sitting in silence before the Lord. And we have been, there's, it takes some training to do that sometimes, right? Like in people, cause they just want to come in. Hey, how are you? How's the weather? How's this? It's small talk. And we, we try not to entertain it. In fact, we have a term. It's, Oh, you're feeding the bears. When you start, when you start responding to these things, right. And we try to explain it in a gentle way. Um, Hey, this is what we do here. This is different than other rooms. If you want to go have conversations with people, like there's plenty of other places you can be. Um, but what we don't want to miss is we don't want somebody to come into the room and there's a conversation going on and then they just leave. Like if you're coming into a room that says, Hey, you need prayer in Jesus name. You better be, we better be asking, are you here for prayer? And if we don't, we're missing a boat. So we don't know what God might've done in that situation. And then we have, of course, like, like we we're talking about, there's the trolls who come in there and even, so this is an amazing thing, is what we will see when the Holy Spirit is really moving on somebody and there's there's demons that need to come out of somebody, especially. All of a sudden, the room will fill up and it'll be like all these distractions coming in. We had a guy, this, and we have video on this too, I believe, but we had a guy come in and he was like, you know, I said, hey, can we, do you want prayer for anything? And he said, ah, oh, prayer doesn't work. I don't believe in it. And uh, so we, we entertained a little discussion with him. He was in England. He, he had given his, you know, he had prayed to receive Jesus, but never felt anything. It didn't work for him. Right. And we let him hang out for a bit. We answered a couple of questions, but we let him hang out for a bit. And we prayed for other people while he was there and he was listening and he realized, he's like, wow. He's like, and he said it. He's like, you guys love people. And we said, yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. Because we were loved first, right? Like we do. We will try to love people because we were loved first. And he's like, you know what? He's like, you guys are a real deal. And then he enables, asked him, he's like, can I pray for you? And he said, you know what? Yes, you can. And he enables, prayed over him. And at the end of it, the guy said, I'll receive that into me. Okay. But here's where it gets interesting. So all of a sudden, into the room pops somebody saying, hey, and they called out this guy's name. I don't remember his name now. They called out his handle or whatever you want to call it, his avatar name. And they said, hey, I'm here to save you. Yep. And he's like, he didn't know who this person was. And the person was like, oh, I was sent here by such and such. He didn't know who that was. So literally, this guy popped in the room, sent by dark you know like by demon demonic forces to get this guy out of there because this guy was about to give his heart to jesus and the, but the guy saw through it the guy recognized it just like i had just told him i had just talked to him about yes. that type of stuff. yeah so i mean to me it's just that and then but so we have to be bold he enables us great at uh no nonsense that's what i would call no nonsense brian sometimes you don't you don't come in here and deal with, you know, you don't come in here and spread nonsense in our room. This is a holy place. Like we make it holy ground, like take your shoes off at the door and come in. And uh, if you're going to come in here to mess around and, and it's interesting because sometimes we discern that, you know what, there's something God's going to wants to do here for this person. And we'll let them, we'll let them run their course a little bit. Other times it's like, you know, you're gone. <laughs> like all right off the bat and the Holy spirit gives us discernment to see, you know, and of course you have the people coming in asking for prayer for their grandma who's who just died and their dog who's sick and that kind of thing. And it's just, they're just there to, 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 uh, kind of a fake prayer request, you know? Yeah. 
Not all of them, but there's not a all, correct. Not all of them, but then you got to, you know, sometimes you got to call those people out and be like, yep. all right, let and me pray can, for you. And then you can, you can take that prayer. You could take that prayer and turn it around on them and plant a seed in their heart and the Holy Spirit, you know, sick the Holy Spirit on them. <laughs> and uh, we've seen people come in trolling and then two days later come back being like, I just want to apologize and I actually want prayer and I want to know Jesus. Yeah. That's been amazing too, seeing that. Yeah. And I think for anybody that, that would ask, well, how do you know if they were healed or, or how do you know they were delivered or any of that different stuff? Their testimonies. Yeah. The fact that they've come back, the fact that they're in, in, in ingrained with other ministries, the, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, um, it, there's, there's no doubt we've been able to see that. And I mean, there's, there, there's no solid proof that we could give anybody because it is what it is and people will choose to even in real life. I mean, Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Let's talk about in real life a little bit, or, or actually let's go to the Tuesday talks real quick here. How do you think just a, an opinion on the Tuesday talks? It's every Tuesday. It's Oasis talks right through Oasis church VR. Um, we go through a chapter of the Bible right now. We're in second Corinthians. We're, we're That's what we've been doing. You didn't always do that. No, no. We still no, have picking well, controversial topics. That was controversial. Well, you know, there's plenty of controversial topics in yeah. the Bible, but yeah, we used to do that and kind of like, but it's a, it's um everybody, it's a everybody, you know, like, like what's your thoughts? Does anything stand out to you on these scriptures? Right. And it's always been that. Um, and I think a big part of that too, is when you were using like the CEV translation, contemporary English version, and we're reading this, we're like, I've never seen that before. You know, it's just some different takes on the scripture. In different yeah. translations. Well, we I mean, people have said that with with translations they've known. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think about it, that's what's happening. I mean, a lot of times we're, we're receiving eye opening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, whoa, it was yeah. said. And I mean, that's happened ever since the day I got set free. I, I remember people saying, I've never I've never seen that before. It could be John 316. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, whoa. Well, so what, what's your take on that? What, what do you think? And do they do they kind of parallel each other? I know just about everybody in the Tuesday talks has ended up going into big screen, but I mean, how do they? How do they? Um, I mean, I know your heart is to train up uh, a platoon, let's say, of Holy Spirit warriors. I know that's your heart. Um, that's where what God has put in you is that. You're on, you're on the hunt to set people free because you were set free. You, that's that's what God has always had in your heart, based on what I, how I know you and your testimony and what I see, and your boldness to stand up fearless before the darkness and to push back. And I think so often, many you know, like so many Christians go throughout their entire walk. In a, I, I mean, meekness is a good quality, right? Meaning, but meekness is not um, soft. Meekness is power under control. And um, I think that's that's your heart in, in Tuesday Talks is to really help people develop their spiritual warfare. You know, and, and absolutely like going through and doing a Bible study is cool, but you don't, you know, you're not necessarily, you're not sitting there teaching, you're presenting the scripture and then letting people speak into what God's showing them in it. And it's amazing to me how it lines up with other areas. I know like I teach a Bible study to my, to my home church on Monday nights. And it's almost like every time I'll be in, we're in the book of Hebrews right now. And we're talking about second Corinthians lately. And it's like, Oh wow, that connects. And this connects, you know, it's like just seeing how God weaves it all together. And then we yeah. have our friend who is, um, dealing with, I wouldn't call it attacks, but dealing with, uh, people trying to downplay her identity in Christ, you know, and she needs to know like, no, like you need to stand up and who God has made you. He made you who you are and you're part of the body for a reason and encouraging her to step out and go forward with another ministry 
rather than being told, no, you can't pray for people like that here. You know, like we've, we see that and, um, it's just, it's a place for that. It's a place for encouragement. It's a place to build, um, build biblical character and, uh, train for spiritual warfare. And that's where, you know, the big thing was, okay, so we we're talking about these scriptures and you're like, all right, guys, let's go do the prayer room. And not everybody is, is, you know, a lot of people come over there, but the, for sometimes the more people we have there, the harder it can be for God to move. Um, so I think it's got kind of good when it's just a, just two or three at a time, right? Two or three gathered in his name and seeing God do the movement. If all of a sudden we got 10 people hanging out in this prayer room, we end up just talking, right? Because yep. it's hard to maintain the silence with 10 people rather than just like three. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to the, the individual, and it, it really doesn't matter who they are, to the individual you were talking about. and. You know, I would say every single person that goes to the Tuesday talks or has been in the prayer room, I have seen just personally, and I've seen this in the spirit, I have seen tremendous spiritual growth. Yeah. Yeah. Like from one place to a totally different. Yeah. You know from one hiding from God or whatever it is to, Hey, I'm his child. Yeah. So, um, I guess last thing here, we'll wrap this up is, um, how does any of this translate to real life? So for me, I mean, I, I would say, um, it's definitely, and it's something I remember saying, actually, I think I made a Facebook post about this after I got, I got saved. And, uh, cause my mom, my mom is a prayer warrior. And, uh, I remember I wrote it on Facebook. Like, I want to pray like my mom. I remember writing that. Mm-hmm. And my mom even saying like, just pr- talk to God, just pray the scriptures back to him. And like, <laughs> you know, all these, and it's just been, you know, like developing that. Like I don't get an opportunity in my life. Like I'm working from home. I have my, my house church, but I'm not out meeting new people all the time. You know, I'm working, I'm now I'm on VR at night, you know, like these kind of things. So it's like, I don't get that opportunity to pray for people in real life. But what I do get is that opportunity online. And what's funny is that you end up, people end up seeking you out. Like, Hey, we took off, we took a couple month break. Right. And people are like, when we came back, I'm like, where you been? Oh my gosh. And what was awesome though, we saw was that other people who had been in our room, who had been affected by our room, who had been set free in our room, opened up a room in our name using the same name. And they were praying for people. They were setting people free and, and watching, well, I shouldn't say they, God was setting people free in their room through him, through them. Right. And, and seeing what they were doing, like it was amazing. In fact, you know, one of the things you can do in big screen is you can have, if you had two different emails, you could have two different accounts. So sometimes I'll log in. I have, I think, I don't know, 300 friends on my main account now. So if I just want to go in there and watch a movie with somebody, I, I, I don't use that account, you know, because I don't want 300 people popping in and trying to seek me out. So I'll jump into my anonymous account and I, and I went in, and I think I've been into these prayer rooms and just watching what they're doing kind of spying, I guess, and just being like curious as to what they're doing. And it's just awesome to see that it's not just us, right? Like what, what was started there has inspired others to continue it. And they have their ways of doing it. A lot more discussion going on, you know, which some people are need that personable thing. And we have a person right now that we're, we're in the process of, she's been in a couple of times, but she doesn't know how to not talk. And uh, last night she was in and she was learning. She was, she was more quiet. And I I encourage her. She's a counselor at heart. So I'm encouraging her, Hey, you need to open up a Christian counseling room. Right. Where you can have these discussions. You can have those long and drawn out discipleship counseling and sessions with people. Is that it? There's a need for that as well. Absolute need for that. And like I said, people being able to open up about deep rooted issues in their life (coughs) because of the anonymity 
it opens up a world. Like I, I would love to see like true Christian counselors out here in VR offering help to people who need it. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, let's wrap this up. I, I, I thank you, yeah. Mr. Ramsey for Ryan yeah. for, uh, for your time. And, and, um, I, I, I would say this, I, I would say there are real people, right? Yeah, behind and, every name and every avatar, it's a real person. No, real issues. Yeah. A real God in virtual reality. Yeah. Right. But for me, when I translate it into personal, I think what it's done is, you know, you had COVID, you had this, everybody distanced, you know, church, right? You're whatever. But I was able to see more, to be involved and see more people. The salvation is, like I said, the salvation is the most important thing. It's not a question. But the salvations were so much. When Kingdom Builder came over, he was going to do ministry um, in a certain avenue. And he said, I see way more people get saved, truly saved. And things happen here than over there. I'm definitely coming over here. You know what I mean? And, uh, and so I think real life translation is that the more the, the and, and think about it for a, a, let's call it a practice ground, not that you want to practice with people's lives, but it really is. You, I mean, God is God, right? At the end of the day, training ground. God it's is God. Ground. Yeah. It is absolutely a training ground. And, and so you can go in there and you can make mistakes and somebody can be there and it is what it is. People are going to make mistakes. If you don't think we are, you're crazy. You're yeah. It happens in real life. If you're yeah. on a prayer team at a church. Yeah. You're making mistakes, but now this is somebody you got to see every week. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. And so, so for me, I mean, on this trip I'm on right now, up to my, on my way up to New Hampshire, I'm, I literally have, you know, in the few places that I've been able to be out and about, I've prayed for people. I've watched God move. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's just, it's, it's just what we do. I think it's what we're supposed to do. I think it's just extremely biblical. 